Global Business Insights podcast from PS Learning, featuring your hosts, Dr. Charlotte de Brabant and Max Kent, bringing you the leading global experts and thought leaders from all industry sectors to give you cutting edge key insights into the future of business, technology, and thought leadership. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in today's podcast. And I'm so excited to be talking about the future of spent management technology, of course, with my partner in crime, Max Kent, but a very special guest and a thought leader, Lucy Day. Hi, Lucy. Thank you so much for joining us today. Maybe we can just kick off by having you just introduce yourself quickly and some of your background. Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm absolutely delighted uh, to be here. Great to be chatting to Charlotte and Max this afternoon, two people who I have uh, had a great uh, time working with previously. So thank you both for for inviting me to join the podcast today. Uh, Yes, so I'm Lucy Day. I'm Senior Solutions Specialist at Proactis. Um, And that really means that I get to be in the driving seat um, in showcasing our source to pay solutions. And although I've been at Proactis for seven months, so not quite part of the furniture yet, uh, I actually started working with Proactis and I'm going to be showing my age here. Um, I think it was circa 2005. Um, I started working with them through their partner network. And it kind of feels like I've gone full circle um, and that I've come home because it was through working with Proactis um, and actually working with a number of the accounts that I managed at one of their Sun Systems partners that I fell in love with everything to do with procurement. And over the course of the next uh, 15, 16 years, I continued to work with them um, through uh, the current partner that I started working with and uh, a different partner, really working with organisations that were looking to streamline their their back office uh, procurement processes. So that wasn't just necessarily purchase to pay, that was also looking about how they managed their suppliers and how they onboarded them into their organisation, how they managed contracts and actually how they actually went out and procured Um, certain goods or services before rolling that into the P2P process. But there there were other solutions that I worked with. Um, Really, my my background is more about making sure that back office processes are optimised and where they can be digitised using technology um, to bring that to life. Um, And I've worked across lots of different sectors, uh, financial services, uh, not-for-profit and charity, Um, energy, oil and gas and retail. Um, But really and truly, I like solving problems. Um, And uh, it's great to be back at Proactis, as I've said, where my love of procurement um, first started all those years ago. Brilliant. Thanks, Lucy. Um, Really pleased to have you on the podcast. Um, As you know, absolutely loved working with you and our time together. So it's a real delight to have you back on here. And also just to talk about how um, things have progressed for you since you've um, since we last worked together. So, um, with that in mind, what are you seeing as some of the current challenges faced by businesses managing their spending at the moment? Do you think? There's, there's a few, um, and I, and I guess really sort of we can we can talk through um, some of those. I, I think one of the biggest challenges, and I, and I'm sure you know this this wasn't just the case for for spend management per se. I, I think it was felt by every organisation out there across some aspect of their business. Is is COVID has massively changed the landscape um, of the way that that people work. Um, you know, people are working hybrid. Some people have gone fully remote, uh, and and I think that that came as quite a big shock, um, even to some organisations that would consider themselves to be reasonably digitised. Um, from a spend management perspective, what what we saw, um, you know, was was a was a huge shift, um, particularly around the accounts payable function. Uh, in managing invoices and and making sure uh, suppliers were still paid on time. Uh, You know, if you've not got people in an office and people are sending in their invoices to an office that's shut, 
Um, how do you manage that? So there's been a huge shift towards making the whole spend management process um, digital as far as possible. Um, and I think some organisations have have struggled with with that um, because not everybody um, is 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 optimised uh, and and had a, a piece of technology that would allow them to quickly, um, you know, move to remote working and and continue the business as usual. Uh, so that's that's one thing that we've seen, um, and, and certainly has has driven people towards looking at at, at spend management um, more more fully. Um, and, and to support that that way of working. I, I think the other challenge that, that we've seen is, you know, how do you take a spend management solution and actually implement it in such a way that it creates a user-friendly and familiar environment for people to use um, to procure things whilst actually doing all of the governance um, in in the background, and I, I've seen this, you know, time time and time again, where you know people come to us and say, well, you know, we we need uh, an AP automation solution. We're 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 not really processing our invoices particularly effectively. And actually, when you drill into the problems that they then want to explore with you. The actual issues are, well, invoices aren't matching because the pricing's wrong or the invoice is coming in where the purchase order has to be raised retrospectively or, you know, worst case scenario, uh, the invoice comes in where we don't actually have the supplier um, on our systems yet. And, and when you kind of dial down into that, that actually is not an invoice processing issue yes it's ultimately going to cause issues um in in processing those invoices where you can't match to the purchase order but actually all of those issues are tied into the upstream p2p process so i think you know from a implementations perspective what what we see is people thinking far too much about the robustness of the workflow the budget checking and actually miss the point of how easy are we going to make it for our users to find what they need from the suppliers that are complicit with the pre-negotiated pricing that procurement have worked really hard to negotiate for the organisation? And what happens? People bypass the system. So all that time and effort that's been put in to actually go out, find a suitable technology, go through the process of, you know, drafting the requirements and then implementing it goes to complete and utter waste because they've missed the most important thing which is making sure that the users can use it and actually it's going to make their lives easier and you're going to get that full user adoption so that's certainly one of the the, the biggest challenges that, that that we've seen um over recent months lucy thank you so much for sharing and yes i can definitely resonate with that a lot um, maybe you can just elaborate how you see spent management technology then evolving now in the next five to ten years. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's already evolved so much already. Um, we, we know technology uh, certainly works at a big pace. Um, and over the next five to uh, ten years, I see a greater use of um, AI coming into spend management. So where I see that from a from a user adoption perspective and tying that back into the, the challenge that, that we just sort of spoke about um, before is actually having, um, you know, the, the spend management solution drive the user towards the right supplier, the right pricing, making suggestions of where to procure things and actually showing them you know, you're looking for this particular good or service. Let's actually search the 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 the, the wider um, market for you and show you where you can procure this at the most effective cost. Um, and and I think one thing that we're definitely starting to see already is actually using data that already exists in the market to do a lot of the upfront cost analysis before you even actually would necessarily go out 
and conduct a tender process. We see a lot of organisations that are now putting it as part of their requirements that the spend management solution must have the ability to integrate intrinsically with third party data sources. And that's not just necessarily for a cost management um, perspective. It's also to bring in other key aspects of data around um, how to really go to do full belt and braces due diligence on the eligibility of a supplier. So that's looking at things like social value. It's looking at things like sustainability, because whilst cost has a, a bearing, that that's very much what I perceive to be quite an old fashioned notion that that's all procurement are there to do. Procurement are instrumental in driving some very key deliverables that, that we have, um, you know, coming up over the next few years. Uh, in the UK in particular, we have very ambitious uh, carbon targets. And the only way that organisations are actually going to be able to commit to any pledge that they've put out there in the domain is making sure that they're leveraging the data that they've got from a spend perspective and actually bringing that together with data that exists in the market to really actually be able to prove that they are having an impact on things like their carbon footprint um, in their supply chain. Thanks, Lucy. Um, yeah, I can really um, agree with you there on and seeing how things have evolved and certainly that data source is critical for really any kind of procurement as we know. Um, so it's great to hear you you speaking about that and how it's how that whole ethos is continuing. Um, you mentioned AI earlier and on our podcast we've had quite a few different um, thought leaders talk about their take on how AI will affect their own industry in the future. Um, you mentioned it briefly but have you got any more sort of insight how, into how you think AI and machine learning those sort of more advanced um, automation technologies will help spend management technology in the future? Yeah, I mean, I suppose really from from my perspective, um, having worked um, across lots of different technologies uh, and some of those being in the, the, the sort of business intelligence and performance management space, um, I take artificial intelligence at the moment with a slight pinch of salt. It, it does have its place, but it's still a relatively new technology. And I think it, it still needs to be put through its paces um, really to kind of build the robustness into it. And, and the reason I say that is that for me, artificial intelligence should never actually replace actual intelligence. Um, and having actual data in front of you um, to support making bigger decisions is, 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 as we've just said, absolutely critical. You need to have things um, from a data perspective to, to, to support making some of those really critical decisions. Um, so I would always want to be using any AI technology alongside the actual data um, that I have to, to validate, um, you know, anything that, that you know, the, the AI uh, technology may be suggesting. Where we do see it having an impact um, already um, and, and certainly something that I do think um, is, is going to have a significant uh, impact from a procurement perspective is, as I've mentioned before, having technology within the spend management platform that drives the user towards the supplier and the price, um, where it says you're looking for this particular good or service, and actually this is where you can get it at the cheapest cost. However, do be aware that this supplier has a higher carbon impact than a supplier that may be charging you a few pounds more. Because those are going to be the sorts of things that people are going to be basing their decisions on from a P2P perspective going forward. Um, so I, I see it having a presence now in the actual 
kind of P2P process. Um, and, and I hope that that would be something that would continue. And as I say, bringing in those other data metrics alongside price to, to kind of help people, people make a well-rounded and informed decision before they go and, and buy something. But also, um, you know, down at this sort of downstream, the accounts payable processing side of things, we are, I mean, we, we as an organisation at Proactis, um, I'm sure it's not lost on anyone um, that, that's listening to this that's come from or is in a procurement um, space at the moment. There is a great reason to raise a purchase order when it comes to coding your invoice because the solution is uh that is architected to make sure that that coding, um, particularly at line level, happens as part of that PO process so that when the invoice comes in, the coding is driven from the PO and matched accordingly at line level. There are always going to be instances, however, where invoices will be non-PO. Um, we see that a lot with people who are looking at, you know, things like phone bills, things like utilities and things like that. And they don't want the manual effort that it takes to then have to code those invoices manually. So again, what we're seeing with um, the AI technology is um, the ability to do auto-suggestive coding. So that would be where the technology would say, based on the invoice that you received from this supplier last month, which is of the same content or similar content, these are potentially the codes which you might want to allocate for this particular invoice is this you know correct and then obviously um if that proves to be the case the solution would then uh, code that for the user so it's auto suggesting certain things um from an invoice processing perspective but as i said those are the two kind of biggest areas at the moment that we're seeing ai starting to get quite a significant um footprint in Interesting, Lucy. And then how do you see that and with, with the technologies and, and what you were just describing, how do you see that improve efficiency and, and reduction of costs then for, for businesses? Um, again, I'm going to tie this back to COVID. Um, I think a lot of us that worked through COVID, I certainly did, um, I was with Sage at the time and very well taken care of. I, I just absolutely could not be more thankful for technology. Uh, it allowed me to carry on and do my business as usual. Um, it allowed me to connect with my peers, still look after my customers. Um, and from a spend management perspective, I'm actually still quite surprised even post COVID, the amount of organisations that don't have certain aspects of uh, a source to pay solution. Um, and one of the biggest things we're seeing at the moment is um, contract management. Uh, people are still managing their contracts on spreadsheets. Um, we had a real life example of a prospect that we were talking to that were looking at a contract management um, solution. Um, and, and what thrust the business case forward for them was the fact that a contract of a 90,000 value auto renewed without anybody knowing about it. And that, that's a big number. Um, so for me, I think any manual process that can be digitized um, from a spend management process is, is going to help save time. But more importantly, and, and sort of taking this back to COVID, it's actually about empowering and enabling your users. I think coming out of COVID, we all we all came to realise that we spend so much time at work and we spend so much time in our jobs that actually we need the technology to work more effectively and empower ourselves to do the value add stuff that we were actually brought into the organisation to do. And I know from having spoken to a lot of procurement professionals over the last few months that in a, in a lot of cases, they do feel frustrated where they don't have the technology to support the absolutely business critical function that they provide, because it's not just about making those cost savings. 
It's about making sure that suppliers are compliant. It's about reducing risk to the organisation. It's about making sure that the relationships with suppliers are working effectively because suppliers are critical just as, as customers are critical. So from my point of view, it's not just about process digitization and optimization, which is about saving time, bringing transparency. It's about making your users feel happier and actually letting them get on and do their job without the burden of time consuming and manual processes. Brilliant. <clears throat> Thanks, Lucy. That's fantastic. And and totally uh, uh, with you on that one. Um, we worked together at uh, sort of the back end of the pandemic. So certainly um, had that experience with you really working with customers. And at the time, we really saw that shift in people moving towards more remote solutions. So certainly I'm, I'm with you on the fact that spend management technology kind of came of age really in the pandemic, didn't it? Where you sort of people were on the fence. And then, as you say, the invoices won't get paid so they needed to uh look at those technologies more seriously um we're also seeing which you touched on which i think is a really um interesting theme that's come out in several of the podcasts and certainly in the last one we did with amanda prochaska she's touched on this as well where mm -hmm. um procurement is starting to become more and more aligned not just with the suppliers but with the way that sales works so having things like sales training or internal meetings between the sales and the procurement teams because they're actually the two sides of the same coin so understanding how sales works and how like how how to sell to procurement seems to be a real key thing that's happening in the market where uh, as you say the supplier relationships are really really key so they're being treated differently and more um, inputs being into it, understanding those. Um, so with that in mind, what are some of the ethical considerations you've also seen um, when you're working with procurement people? Um, stuff around, you know, the spend management technology is going to be accessing some pretty sensitive data. There's a lot of people logging into that, um, those systems. So what what's your take on that in terms of as, as people get more and more remote with this? What's the attitudes you're seeing around um, privacy, security, um, and empowering those people that you, you've talked about and letting them get on with their jobs? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a consideration that is, is becoming more and more um, prevalent because of, of the way that, that, that people are working. And absolutely, data privacy and security is critical and that and that's not just from a spend management you know perspective we we've, we've seen the whole um data security landscape change through the arrival of gdpr um of, of which uh you know that there's a whole host of regulations that that need to be adhered to but i think that there's absolutely a requirement to deliver data privacy and security and, and actually prove that you are doing that. Um, but I also think that sometimes people can get a little bit uh, too bogged down in it. And, and I think there needs to be that, that, that balance and that confidence and robustness in the technology that it, 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 it's going to comply with those things. And what I mean by that is, you know, I've worked with lots of organisations in the past where um, it, it's kind of been a, an all or nothing. Um, you know, we, we've gone into the system, had a look at, you know, the way they're architected and, and there's just no security set up at all. It's it's a free for all, which obviously um, is is not uh, appropriate. Then you know we've worked with other organisations that wanted to go the completely the other way um, and put in so much security, it, it would actually prevent anyone from actually being able to do anything. And actually, that's not the purpose of. Um, you know the the the, the security and, and data privacy that exists you know certainly within our solution the, the the security is such that you can be restrictive and make sure that people are only seeing the suppliers that are relevant to them the contracts that are relevant to them or not at all um you know you can really dial things down to just give somebody you know a basic access to a limited selection of suppliers 
but the point is that you've got to invest the time um, in actually building that out as part of your system design. And what I would say is, you know, there's a, there's a huge risk um, for any organisation that falls foul of that and doesn't properly scope that as part of their requirements when they're looking at spend management um, technology. It should be part of the system design and it should be constantly revisited. Um, you know, it's such an important part of the solution. Um, you know, key things like offboarding staff members that have left, um, the amount of organisations that, you know, don't necessarily have a robust process for doing that, you know, opens up the risk of all sorts of issues if that user still has access to the system um, if, you know, if after they've left. So I think it's hugely important. Um, but I think there needs to be a balance. You want to make sure that there is that data privacy and security in there to make sure that people can only access the things that the business has deemed appropriate for them. But don't go far too far the other way, because actually you'll end up making the system so restrictive, people won't use it. Lucy, I, I completely agree. And um... And, and that brings me actually to the to the next question, more on user experience. Um, maybe you can speak a little bit more of the importance of of user experience in in the adoption and success of of new technologies. This is a great question, um, and I'm so glad that you included this because user experience is everything. And you know, we we are seeing that day in, day out, um, where if you don't have a system that's user friendly and enables users to find what they need quickly and easily, they'll bypass it. Or if you don't have a system that you've built in such a way that it guides users towards what you want them to do, you can't necessarily expect them um, to always know that they've selected the, the appropriate sourcing activity, for example. So user experience is really important. And what we see from organisations that approach us to talk about um, source to pay from, from a sort of full perspective um, or, or certain elements of that, such as P2P, they're often looking at replacing the system because they're seeing those issues. Uh, users are picking up the phone, you know, going to the supplier directly, um, which it, it, that's just it's a huge red flag. So from our perspective, it's all about the end user from a from a from a design. You need to have the processes in place in the background to make sure that things follow proper process, that they're allocated to the right people at the right time and that they follow the right approval, that they have the correct checks. But but ultimately, the end user who just wants to go and buy something or, you know, just wants to go and create a sourcing event, you know, to, to then go and issue that out, they shouldn't necessarily have to be experts. Um, and I think if you architect a system where you assume that all of your end users are going to be procurement experts, that's where you're going to fall foul and you're going to start to see users not using the system and bypassing it. Um, you know, from my perspective, the greater experience any end user can have, um, particularly from a P2P perspective, is if they're going in, they're looking at a catalogue or um, going out to the supplier's website via a punch out and you're, you're, you're guiding them. You're, you're using the system to make their life easier. I mean, we've all bought things online, right? You know, I'm on Amazon almost every day and, and I saw the Amazon driver during COVID more than I saw anyone else. Um, so if you're creating that, that ease of use and that familiar experience within the spend management solution, you're going to see the greatest level of uptake from a user perspective. So I, I cannot, um, you know, uh, overestimate the importance of user experience. It's absolutely key if you want to get a spend management solution fully embedded and uh, widely used within an organisation. 
yeah again totally agree with you user experience is so important for everything we're doing so um i'm glad that you're still still uh, practicing what you preach there because it's a it's a um, hugely important topic um going back to one of the things you mentioned earlier i really like what you were talking about about um potentially pushing uh, more information to the end user to empower the decision they make at purchase order requisition stage. Um, is that one of the ways that you see spend management technology being used to promote sustainability and ESG um, and eco-friendliness in general in business operations? Or are there sort of more than that that you're seeing? Well, as, as you uh, will know, Max, this is a very, uh, you know, topic that's very dear to my heart. Um, and that's primarily because in um, a past life, as you know, um, I got to see firsthand um, how much impact suppliers can have on the environment. And as a mum of two young children, I am very concerned about the planet that they are growing up in and ultimately the planet that I will leave them behind um, it is left in in a good state and it's and it's on all of us to be responsible for making sure we reduce our carbon impact and interestingly you know it's those organizations with a very high level of indirect spend that, that actually the biggest app, uh, impact from a carbon footprint perspective is going to be in their supply chain so spend management and, and particularly procurement's role in that and actually supporting the organization's overall goal to either you know become uh, carbon neutral or in best case scenario carbon negative is huge it's absolutely huge so i absolutely see spend management technology being used to promote it because if you're looking at scope 3 um, which is everything that that sits um, within third party from a carbon perspective, it is all that spend data. And what's so frustrating um, is that anyone that's got a spend management solution has that data already. They've just got to bridge it together with the appropriate carbon intensity ratios to be able to get that visibility and start making that impact. And even doing little things. I mean, I do this personally and I would encourage everyone to do the same. More and more suppliers now are giving you the option to consolidate your deliveries. Um, you know, you, you might go on to Next or Amazon that's a marketplace where you're buying things from different suppliers, which means ultimately all of those things that you're ordering could arrive at different times. But how about you actually just consolidate that delivery to one? Now, if we all did that, and if you think about if businesses did that, that would have a huge impact on the carbon footprint. But I think, you know, spend management technology and actually consolidating that spend information with the carbon data that is out there already and will only continue to evolve is absolutely paramount because, as I've said, it's on all of us, businesses included, to really take ownership of 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 how they are dealing with sustainability and start making those decisions from a procurement perspective that include that very important information um that that is absolutely vital to us getting towards a far better and healthier planet than we have today what a what a great answer and and lucy just to close off maybe you can just share to our listeners today uh, your your tips, how can businesses effectively implement and integrate all the spend management technologies and um, and, and, and just the future of, of, of what is to come into their operation? Well, uh, I, I wish I wish I had a, a quick and simple answer to that question. Um, I mean, spend management is such a broad term, isn't it? Um, you know, for me, it encompasses really what I consider to be full digital, you know, procurement. It includes everything from, you know, sourcing to 
onboarding suppliers through a complicit process and making sure that you know they comply with the requirements of the organization through to effective contract management and i don't just mean contracts in a repository you know actually how is that contract performing against key metrics that you have determined you want to measure that contract by and actually then what happens to that supplier if that metric falls below an acceptable threshold and same with srm you know what are the metrics that you're holding your suppliers accountable to and, and thinking about what we've just been talking about sustainability social value where that metric falls below an acceptable threshold. What are you as an organisation going to do about it? Um, and then you've got P2P sitting underneath. Um, you know, purchase to pay absolutely is vital. You want to make sure that people are procuring through a compliant process with the due diligence around budget checking um, and having all the transactional aspects taken care of. But actually, it's that upfront kind of digital procurement piece and all of that due diligence that's done up front that is so, so important. Because if you don't get that right, the P2P pros by by you know consequence will 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 fall apart effectively because you know you you've got no control. So for me, I think one of the key things I would say is don't jump in with both feet on on day one when you come to to look at, at spend management what we encourage anyone talking to proactives to do and, and you know we've got lots of people within our organization that have done the job um that are sip certified so you know we, we we like to think having been in the market for for over 20 years um we're 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 you know experienced in what we're saying is have a look at where your biggest pains are. Start to think about where the biggest impact can be and then look at things from a milestone perspective. You know, we pride ourselves on having a full suite, but it's modular. So that means that we can work with a customer from day one to implement co contract management or purchase to pay, and then we can grow with them. And we can actually get them to a point at which they're fully optimised, but at a pace that's suitable to them. Because I think what we have to appreciate, and particularly what we're seeing out there um, in, in the market because of the cost of living crisis, one of the unfortunate um, casualties of uh, a tough market is people in procurement. And actually, they're so important to the organisation. Um, so you know when it comes to looking at this make sure that you you do your homework um in terms of understanding your processes and and be honest with yourself you know just because something's been done you know for for however long and that's the way it's always been done it doesn't mean that there's not an opportunity to review it look at you know where it could be optimized and and seeing what impact could have and then ask yourself the really, really, really important question is what is the impact on your organisation by doing nothing? And that for us is one of the biggest things that we see. You know, we spend a lot of time with organisations that put so much time and effort into a business case that then go to market and then don't do anything at all. And that for me poses the biggest risk of all because the world is changing, the world is moving forward and no one can afford to stand still. That's a really brilliant answer, Lucy. Thanks again so much for taking the time to um, explain and, and go through all of your knowledge and experience with us. I mean, one of the things I really love is that um, it feels like you've never repeated a, a year in your career. You've learned all the way through from every single business you've worked from and now of summarising all of that into some real key learnings for all of our listeners to really get into so a lot of the things you said there are some massively key things for businesses to be very mindful of when they're looking at anything to do with this technology um so I, I think that's some real learnings for anyone listening to this from from a real expert in the industry so thanks again from from both of us for all of your insights and time there. Um, just quickly, if anyone wants to explore Proactis more, if they want to understand more about how they could uh, potentially look at that technology, what's the best way to get in touch? 
best way to um, get in touch is go to our website, which is www.proaptis.com. Um, there are links to request some demonstrations. I'm always open to having a conversation with anyone. You can find me on LinkedIn under Lucy Day and drop me a message. Um, but do come and have a chat to us. We're a friendly bunch. Um, we're, we're, we're very honest. We're very transparent. Um, you know, we, we don't, uh, uh, you know, we, we talk best practice. That's that's what we're all about. Um, so uh, do reach out to us if you've got any questions and you want to have a, a, a an exploration of um, some of the things that we can potentially help you with from a source to pay perspective. Fantastic. Thank, thank you so much, Lucy. And especially also to our listeners, thank you once again for joining in and and tuning in. And it was such a great pleasure to have you with us today, Lucy. And that being said, I'm looking forward to Max to our next podcast soon. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Speak everyone. Cheers. Featuring your hosts, Dr. Charlotte de Brabant and Max Kent.